thanks to this policy of cover-up and secrecy, the evidence becoming public was just the peak of the iceberg. One of the films released from the Blue Book archives was taken on April 15, 1967, from a Coast Guard helicopter at Catalina Island off the coast of California. Another one is the footage shot in 1956 in the state of Utah, showing two discs passing a boulder at an incredible speed, here again in slow motion. Or this film taken by a civilian employee near Luke Air Force Base in Texas in 1959. A jet tries to intercept the object. This amazing series of photographs of a Saturn-shaped craft flying around the peak of the island of Trinidad in the Atlantic Ocean was taken on January 19, 1958 by an official photographer of the Brazilian Navy aboard the Navy training ship Almirante Saldana in the presence of the whole crew. After the official analysis proved the object to be at least 120 feet in diameter, the Brazilian President Jusgalino Kubitschek presented the pictures personally at a press conference on February 20th, 1958. Not before 1985 did the National Aeronautics and Space Administration release UFO footage taken by their astronauts in terrestrial and lunar orbit. This film was taken in 1956 by astronaut James McDivitt aboard Gemini 4, one day before he photographed the cylindrical UFO in Earth's orbit, one day before the historic landing on the moon on July 20th, 1969. The Apollo 11 crew filmed these two luminous objects in lunar orbit. On an Apollo 12 film, a bright object flies about the lunar surface at great speed. Let's magnify it and analyze its flight pattern. Here, a dome-shaped disk of obviously giant size hovers next to the moon. And here it appears that two UFOs have landed on the lunar surface. When we magnify it, we recognize further details. Do extraterrestrials have bases on the moon? This official British Airways film was taken in the early 70s on one of the Concorde test flights over southern England. Clearly we see a small bell-shaped probe surrounding the supersonic plane hovering for seconds in front of the engines. in the once Soviet Union, the UFOs created much attention. The famous test pilot Colonel Dr. Marina Popovich collects reports of her fellow pilots about UFO sightings. There are many examples. I got hundreds of letters from our pilots. Altogether, I know about 4,000 of such reports. I received one letter from Vyatkin, one of our test pilots, and I met with him. He flew one of our MiG-19 jet interceptors when he had a strange encounter. He had just reached an altitude of 15,000 feet when he had the impression that his aircraft collided with something and started to spin. The MiG-19 is a very strong aircraft. The pilot went further down and tried to win altitude, but again he was pressured down. He tried it a third time when he saw a beam, a silverish beam, coming from a large object, and he realized it was a UFO. He turned around, flying a circle, and went in for landing. He was very emotional after that. We can just assume how much UFO evidence is being held back from the public. But we get quite a good impression when we study the latest events on the Caribbean island of Puerto Rico.